you know that guy on YouTube who like takes really expensive devices and puts them in a blender and then says, will it blend? And he chops them up into tiny pieces. DevOps can be a little bit like that. Not like as destructive to phones or anything, but sometimes we don't know if a particular tool or term is DevOps or not. And part of the problem is DevOps is certainly a tool set, but even more importantly, DevOps is a mindset. Meaning when you're thinking about a particular tool or a particular device, think to yourself, is this going to help me do my job more efficiently and programmatically? And really that's how we can determine if something is DevOps or not. And part of the confusion is also because there are so many different ways to do the same task and it's going to be different for every person. What makes the most sense? Now I have two technologies here that are definitely considered DevOps. I have Chef and I have Ansible. Both of these are configuration management platforms, but they work in very different ways. Let's say this is our technician, Julie. We have her over here and over here. Now in the Chef world, she would take her laptop and she would make configuration changes onto a Chef server and then she would download pending changes and then you know they would go back up and she'd make changes and then we come back and she interacts directly with the chef server and then on every one of the client computers there's a tiny little program installed called chef client and that client periodically queries the chef server and says hey are there any changes i need to make to myself and the chef server replies and says yes you need to do you know this and this and this and this and that's how the whole system works she never directly interacts with the client computers themselves she only interacts with the chef or the chef server and then the chef server interacts with the chef client which reaches out to the chef server so it's complicated but it's very robust meaning you can have multiple julies who are all working on the chef server. They can contribute code and that sort of thing and work together on this large infrastructure. Now, Ansible is another very viable configuration management tool, but it works drastically different. There is no, like over here, we have the tiny little chef client. There's nothing like that in Ansible. All the software is stored on Julie's local computer. It can be a workstation, a laptop, whatever. And then she makes changes and those changes are pushed to each client directly from her laptop, which means Julie can you know, take her laptop home, go to another office, and she can then push changes to another set of computers from her same laptop. All the software is stored on her laptop. There's no server in the server room that is the you know, equivalent of a chef server. It's just designed completely differently. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's not scalable. There could be another Julie. She would just have her own laptop and she would have her own set of programs that she would use to push changes to the client devices. So one concept, two drastically different ways to go about it, but both of these are DevOps. And it's not just with configuration management. Let's say we have this server or service creation, which means that we're gonna use code on the command line to spin up a server or spin up a service. Now, these are two different DevOps tools, Vagrant and Docker. Vagrant is a tool that allows you to script the creation of actual virtual machines. And when I say virtual machines, I mean with an entire operating system, applications installed on top, they have you know CPU, RAM, hard drive, all these things can be automated using the Vagrant tool. Compare that to Docker, which is a containerization system, which allows you to script the creation of applications that run inside a central operating system, but they're isolated from the other applications. So they do conceptually the same thing. We have an application here and we have an application here, but they do them drastically different. And again, they're both DevOps tools. So when you're trying to figure out what is or isn't a DevOps device or a DevOps technology, really rather than is it DevOps, a better question is, does it solve your problem in a programmatic way? If it does, it's DevOps. If it's not, it might be DevOps for somebody else. It's much more important to focus on a DevOps mindset rather than a specific tool set because you might find one of the tools that you're currently using would best be served by using another tool like Docker instead of Vagrant. And if none of the existing tools do what you need them to, hey, invent a new one. That's what IT is all about. We're solving problems by coming up with solutions.